Well, uh, so we are uh, starting the uh, next talk. Uh, the speaker today is Harry Zhou. He's uh, a graduate from Cornell University at uh, 2004 and uh, has since moved to Yale. And uh, uh, he's now the chair of the statistics department. And uh, his, the title of his talk is, is here. So we thank Professor Zhou. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, uh, it's truly a pleasure to be here. OK, do we have a point or somewhere? Or? No? OK, uh, I, I, could, I could just use my computer. Uh, and, uh, and so the, depart and the department name will be changed very soon. And in a month, the department name would be Department of Statistics and Data Science, and to embrace on the big data. Uh, Uh, but you know, the name sounds silly, but politically it's good, and the department size would double, even triple, maybe uh, very soon. Uh. So, and, uh, and uh, these days, uh, Bayesian approach and is becoming and more and more popular. And, and just now, and, uh, and from a, uh, a very beautiful talk uh, by Andrew German, and, and Andrew gave an, uh, warnings on the practical side. And this talk and uh, kind of compliments on Andrew's talk, and we, we, we try to give um, some theoretical foundation um, for Bayesian approaches. So this is a Bayesian talk, and, but I'm not a Bayesian. Uh, most of my friends are a frequentist, and, and some really hate Bayesian approaches. Uh, and, uh, but in this talk, I, I hope to convince um, um, some frequentist and if we pick our prior and carefully and appropriately, an abrasion approach could do as well as any and frequency approach, and even under an a frequency evaluation. So what? Uh, uh, so and for a class of models, and in this talk, and I'll give a prior, and then calculate the posterior. And if I if I have a Bayesian, you know how to calculate the posterior. It's done. And but deep in my heart, I'm a frequentist. I'm going to evaluate the posterior. And um, what I want to do is to show that, and suppose, OK, this is your parameter. That's the truth. And, and around the truth, I'll draw a ball. And I'll show that. And outside the ball, and, and the probability is, is, close, is nearly 0. And that means I want to show my posterior is truly concentrated around the truth. And the size of the ball would matter. And I will show the size of the ball would match the accuracy a frequency could get. And in that case, I w and, and a language we often use, or a phrase we often use is, is the posterior contracts and to the true parameter and optimally. And uh, could it be read optimally, could it be uh, some other sense. Uh. So this is a joint work uh, with Chao Gao, and who just uh, uh, graduated from Yale and, and is now at Chicago. And Chicago and offered his wife a tenure track position as well. Uh, and also uh, Art Van der Waard. And Art is a uh, leading expert uh, in uh, Bayesian non-parametrics non and uh, establishing a uh, 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 rate optimal posterior contraction uh, type of result. And he just won a, a big prize and not so long ago, on this kind of uh, Nobel Prize in Netherlands. And, but he's a uh, very humble guy. And one time, he, he was joking. And my chair told me, I'm now internationally famous in Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> so OK, uh, in the past six years, and we had seen uh, very exciting and, and significant developments uh, in and number parametric estimation and high dimensional statistics and network analysis, and more recently, and but more on the frequency side. And, and what I mean is this, and uh, if on the uh, Bayesian side, and uh, the posterior contraction result and, uh, was, were, were not and, uh, developing and so smoothly. And for example, and, and 60 years ago, and we got a uh, rate optimal estimation result for non parametric density estimation. And, but the first and consistent posterior contraction result was only 
obtained uh, 30 years ago in late 1980s. And in the past 20 years, and we had seen extremely active research in high dimension statistics and could be too active, and tons of papers on that. And, but the first and really optimal posterior contracting result and for sparse linear regression, kind of the simplest high dimensional statistical model, and was, uh, was only obtained and uh, was only uh, a, uh, uh, appearing last year and in the annals of statistics. So, and you see, you know, it's not so balanced and, uh, you know, in terms of theoretical development and, uh, for frequency side and Bayesian side. So, and, and our research, and I have to say, is kind of highly philosophical. And, uh, you know, we are trying to build a bridge between frequencies and Bayesian. And uh, they, they may not necessarily like each other very much. Uh, some, uh, some frequencies like what we are doing, and they, they call us an FBI, and frequency Bayesian investigation. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, to avoid any bad, you know, uh, 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 Bayesian uh, uh, approaches. And, and some Bayesian and, uh, don't like what we are doing, and they call us FBI as well, and fake Bayesian investigation. <laughs> So in this talk, I'll give a general framework, and which includes some important models in uh, non parametric estimation on high dimensional statistics and network uh, analysis. And we are uh, going uh, uh, to give a, uh, a prior, a unified way to assign prior and for those models. And, and in addition, we give uh, a frequency evaluation of the posterior and to prove, trying to prove a nice, nice and posterior contraction result. So and I'll start with two examples, uh, two simple examples. And one is a stochastic block model, and, and a, a kind of popular model and for network analysis. And, and one, uh, the other example is a sparse linear regression. And, uh, and I guess and, uh, and the most studied model in the past, in the past 20 years uh, on the theoretical side. And then um, uh, originally, and we tried to have a framework and to include these two examples, and it turns out the general framework could include many other examples as well. Uh, and what we are going to do is, and we try to show the posterior contracts, and posterior contracts and, uh, and to, the, uh, to the truth, and, and the accuracy would match the best, and, uh, uh, the best and accuracy and effectiveness would get. So, okay, now on two examples. And the first example, a uh, stochastic block model. And, and, and it's a network model. And for a network, we need to have nodes and edges. And now we have n nodes, and n, okay, mathematical, n nodes, and uh, I'm sorry, my talk is, uh, uh, is, is very mathematical. Uh, and, and we potentially, there are n choose two edges. And every potential edge is associated with a Bernoulli random variable, yij. And if yij is equal to 1, that means there is an edge between a node i and a node j. And if yij is equal to 0, there is an edge. And what we want to do is from the observations, yij, and we want to make inference on theta ij. So on, on theta ij, that's the success probability. And, uh, and so and what we want to do is to estimate the whole matrix theta. And if you know theta, you know how the uh, network is generated. So and that's our goal. And for stochastic block model, and, and, and the theta IJ has a special structure. And the structure is this, and all those N nodes and can be grouped into K communities. And say K is equal to two, and Democrat and Republican. Uh, okay, equal to three, Democrat, Republican, and independent. Uh, and so, uh, and, and, for, and we group into K communities. And my theta IJ and, uh, depends on I and J only through and what communities I and J are belonging to. Let's say if I and J are in community one, and ZI equal to ZJ is equal to one, and then my theta IJ would be equal to B11. And if I is from community one, and J from community two, and ZI equal to one, ZJ from equal to two, then theta IJ would be equal to B12. So it's a very simple model. And if you know who is in which community, this is a very simple problem. You have only k square parameters to estimate. And you may have a lot of data, right? You say you have you observe yj, you know, essentially you have a node of n square data. But the problem is hard, and uh, could be uh, very hard. 
And, and, they, and you, since we don't know the partition, you don't know who is Democrat, who is Republican, what you see is just uh, the, the graph, the network. And, and so we, and, and in t potentially everyone has K ways to be assigned. And then, you have, they, then in total, there are K to the power N partitions. And you have to find a reasonably good one, and which makes the problem hard. And uh, in, uh, in the past few years, I had been looking at this problem and, uh, and, uh, quite seriously. And we had a, uh, a frequency result and, uh, to estimate theta, the, the matrix under Frobenius norm. And also, we obtained and read up in my estimation. Uh, and then and, and some people, in, uh, I give some talks on that, and some people in the audience would ask a question. And uh, the question they ask is this, and Harry, can you get a parallel and Bayesian result? So what they mean is this, and uh, what they mean is this. They are asking me to find a prior, and then calculate the posterior, and, hope, and then they want me to show the posterior and uh, is concentrated in a bowl. And the size of the ball would match the accuracy I could get and using a frequency approach. And I was apologizing. I said I tried, but I did not succeed. And one, one of the main reasons was this. I was using the classical uh, Lacan Schwartz type of argument to prove I couldn't succeed. And so, and, uh, and so I sent my student and to talk to Art van der Waard. And he's a leading expert, again, in, uh, uh, in uh, a patient number metrics or you know, uh, or, uh, uh, patient posterior contraction type of results. So he had a paper with his uh, two courses last year in the honors on sparse linear regression. And uh, this, uh, this is a linear regression, and, and y equal to x times beta plus noise. And, and, uh, and beta could have, uh, uh, the length of beta could be, very, uh, uh, could, be, uh, could be even larger than n. In that case, and if, if, uh, if the length of beta is larger than, 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 than the length of y, and n, uh, 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 n is the number of the sample, and, and then, you know, even if you may have zero noise, you don't have any noise, and you cannot really identify beta. And so, and so that means we have to uh, put some kind of constraint over the linear model. And, and one constraint people use would be, okay, some beta i and some coordinates of beta are equal to zero, and some other coordinates are not equal to zero. And what they mean is this, what they had in mind was this, is, okay, and what I really want to find, want to find is to find significant and scientifically important and, and factors. And so, and okay, for sparse linear regression, and they, they, they and uh, Otto van der Waard and his two courses, and, and found a, a prior, and, and then uh, calculated the posterior, and then evaluated the posterior under the true model, and show and the result could do as well as an effectiveness approach could do. And so, and so, and uh, also on uh, my student on, uh, on, on Chagall and learned on, on their technique, and then and, uh, in addition, he found out and he could have, have a better prior. A better prior in the sense that and on a weak assumption, he may, be able, he may be able to get a stronger result. And I'll uh, uh, comment, on, uh, comment on that uh, later. So in addition, and we found and, and the prior we use, and, uh, and can be, uh, can be uh, uh, the, the prior we use and, and can be used to solve an, uh, an debating uh, problem for stochastic block model as well. So, okay, and, and after and, uh, he got the results, and, and, and then you know, and, uh, he was wondering, okay, how to get the work published. And, and although he was uh, visiting all around the world, and, but I was still Skyping with him and, uh, weekly. And you know, uh, uh, Amsterdam could be very fun. I don't want him to, to be too much distracted over there. Uh, and so, and, okay, and, and we could write two papers. And, and with very similar techniques in two papers, or could write one paper with very two different model, very different models, and and you know two and ways and uh, are not you know optimal to us, and so I was proposing maybe we could find a general model, and for that under the general framework, and uh, then we and we we have you know two specific examples. One is sparse linear regression. The other one is uh, uh, is a stochastic block model. And, and try, you know, maybe we could try to give a unified and a theory and for, for the general framework. So, and to get the general framework, that means we have to find out the similarities and between these two models. So, for sparse linear regression, and your beta and could be uh, very high dimensional, and, but, but, and, uh, but actually, the, uh, 
the and uh, the two and uh, two model or uh, the two and or the uh, or the support set of beta or the the set of uh, non-zero coordinates of beta, and and could be very small. So and a, a a very difficult task is identify and the true support. If you know the true support, it's a very simple linear regression problem. Everyone would know how to do that. And then uh, for stochastic block model, you know, and it's kind of and you know it's kind of similar. And for stochastic block model, and, and it's so often people like to write the uh, the mean uh, uh, matrix of y and uh, and all, all the, you know, the uh, uh, success probability matrix y and the success probability and uh, in, in this form, in a product of three matrices. And the, the B over here is the connection probability, is the K by K matrix I mentioned before. Uh, maybe you do not remember, uh, sorry. Uh, so that's the K by K matrix, uh, that's the B. And I have Z over there, and Z is an N by K matrix. And Z is, uh, uh, I did not write that down, actually it's very simple. And, and my Z matrix has all information of, uh, of clustering. If you know and, and, and who is in which cluster, um, for those nodes, then you know Z. If you know Z, then you know who is in which cluster. So Z is just clustering information. And if you know Z, and then it's just a classical, you know, and parametric estimation problem. You have k square parameters to estimate. But the problem is we don't know Z, and which is, could be challenging. And so the Z over here plays a similar role and like S, is that right? You know, Z is like S. So we could see Z as a model selection parameter. Uh, and okay, and now and there are two models, and one is bi-clustering, and bi-clustering can be seen as an extension of stochastic block model. And, uh, by, and so, and Y is a matrix over here, and now what you want to do, you, you want to do cluster for the rows, and also you want to do cluster for the columns. And the cluster information are encoded in Z1 and Z2. And it's, it's very similar to the block model. And it's just one is symmetric, the other one is not symmetric. And another model and we have over here is diction learning. And diction learning is a very uh, popular model and, uh, and, uh, in uh, machine learning. So, and we suppose you have a lot of images from the same source. And, and, and I'm asking you to do denoising, what are you going to do? You may use wave approach or you use a Fourier uh, basis approach to do denoising. Or you could learn bases from those images, right? You could get a very sparse representation. And, and, uh, and because they're from the same source, you could good, uh, have good bases. And so a diffusion learning model can be seen as an extension of a sparse linear regression. For sparse linear regression, you have only one, and, uh, you have only one column Y. And for diffusion learning model, you have many, many columns Y. You have many, many columns. And what you want to learn and for sparse linear regression, and what you want to learn is beta. Uh, for diction learning uh, problem, you want to learn, it's not just beta, also you want to learn X, the dictionary, the design. And you want to learn both. Of course, you, you may be worried, okay, the problem may not be identifiable, but you could, uh, the problem is identifiable and after a, a, a certain, you know, and, uh, and, uh, 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 you know, under its, uh, in a certain sense. You know, you're, you're, and what we want to do is we want, uh, we want to, uh, uh, we want to find an, uh, a, a dictionary, we call it B over here, and so that for every image, you could get a very sparse representation. Uh. So, and now, and, uh, and, uh, we, and, for, for, uh, and now we want to uh, have a, a general framework, a general framework to uh, include an, uh, all those models. So, and this is the general framework. And in this general framework, I have Y, Y is a matrix. And, and Y has a mean, and mean, okay, and mean, okay, I'm using a, a very uh, abstract notation. And, and the mean has an, uh, two parameters, and Y is Z, and Z I call the model selection parameter, and the other one is B. And B is after doing model selection, and, and you have a, uh, a, a parameter, a low dimensional parameter to estimate. And what we need to do is we need to give a prior for both an, uh, Z and B for both model selection and also low dimensional parameter estimation. And, and, uh, and, and because you know, the, the, the framework is kind of abstract, and I, I think it's good for you to keep an, an, one of those uh, examples in mind and, uh, you know, for this talk. And, and some of us are familiar with the stochastic block model, and you may have this example in mind, and some of us are, uh, are familiar with sparse linear regression, you could uh, have this example in mind. And uh, for sparse linear regression, my S is the Z, is the model selection uh, parameter. Uh. 
So then what's the prior we should use? And we should use a, a two-stage prior. And one prior would be used, uh, used to do model selection and to get a good sense of Z. And the other prior we should use and is, to, uh, is to do a primary estimation for B and after you have done model selection. And the second one seems to be easy. It's a low dimensional traditional problem. And so, okay, that's a, this is the model, and this is the model, and uh, Andrew mentioned in his talk, and, and, and this is kind of the only thing we understand. And so, uh, and, and, we, and we have a normal model, and, so, and suppose I have already two model selection, and, and the model size is one. Okay, only one parameter to estimate. And what a prior you are going to, to use? And, and okay, that's a kind of lazy prior, and Andrew mentioned and later in his talk, and normal Z, normal Z1 prior. And if you use this prior, and, uh, and some frequencies may not like it. It may not like it because and you have a bias, and the bias may not be controlled. And, uh, and uh, the bias may not be controlled, so some frequencies may not like it. And so, and then we want to use a, a, a different prior. And a prior you, you may use is a, a heavy tail prior, and for example, a Laplace prior. And if you use a Laplace prior, and then and your estimator, and if you use, if you use a posterior mean, and to estimate your parameter, and in a, uh, you know, as a frequentist, and, and, they, and, and then, uh, then uh, uh, they, uh, the risk is not bad. It's basically and as, as good as any frequentist approach. <clears throat> and so, and okay, let's, this is a toy example, right? You have only one parameter. And then the question now is this. And suppose you have two parameters, what are you going to do? And that means and you observe x1 to xn, and every xi is now a vector, random vector. And your mean matrix is a theta. Theta is a uh, uh, mean and uh, uh, is a theta. Theta is a vector. And let's say then it's long, uh, uh, the length is, uh, 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 you know, and could be two and, or more. And what are you going to do? And a very natural idea, and this is an idea and all of the world and his also used, is to replace an absolute value of theta over here by L1 norm of theta. By L1 norm of theta. And theta is now a vector. And by L1 norm of theta. And that's a very... Uh, and natural prior to use. And, and, uh, and, act, and in this talk, and, and what we are proposing is slightly different. And we are using to use L2 norm of theta. And it turns out and, and we could get better theoretical properties. Uh. So and this is the prior we use. And, and, we, and we use an uh, L2 norm of theta. And, and this, guy, this guy is the mean uh, parameter and is the mean uh, uh, matrix. Uh, of, of my y, and uh, the norm over here is the Frobenius norm, and or you know L2 norm if you treat the, uh, the, your matrix as a vector, uh, and then you calculate L2 norm. It's not L2 norm square. Be very careful. If I use L2 norm square, then I'm going to fail, and uh, then you know that means we are using Gaussian prior. So we use uh, L2 norm, and then okay, there's a nasty you know uh, 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 normalization constants, and. And, and, and be very careful, and this normalization constant could be very small. This is a gamma function. Gamma, gamma L is you know, L factorial, this, uh, this, and this could be very small. And, uh, and uh, because it's very small, and, uh, oh, and, and the prior for the low dimensional parameter estimation problem, and put it in, in the, later in the field, the model selection, is kind of strange. And, and so we have to be very careful. Uh. So, okay. And, and now, and this is the prior, and okay, now this is the prior we are going to use for low dimensional prime estimation. And still, we need to do model selection, right? We need a prior for model selection. Okay, this is what we're going to, 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 to do. So suppose you have already done model selection, okay? You have selected your true model, S, you know, let's say a subset and of and, uh, 1 to P, right? And it's a subset and, uh, for sparse linear regression. And, and okay, then the model size is later S. And then, okay, we use an elliptical Laplace prior, okay? And uh, for that elliptical Laplace prior, there's a, uh, a normalization constant. Uh. And now, and, uh, we need a prior and for model selection, right? And it's first, uh, we need a prior and for the size, and, uh, for the size of, the, uh, of the support. So, and, and a common wisdom and people use and is, and is to look at the complexity of the model. And, okay, suppose, your S is equal to one, and how many possible models we have? We may have P models. And when, and more generally, and you may have P choose S models. And the prior we are using over here is basically one over P choose S. You know, P choose S is, uh, is essentially, and uh, P choose S is essentially an uh, e to the power S log EP of S. Uh. 
So, and, and we use model complexity and to model the size, uh, or to model the size of, of my model. And then, and, and we have uh, this uh, kind of strange constant over here. And this strange constant we use over here and just to overset a possible bad effect from, from my elliptical Laplace prior and the, the normalization constant. I, I need to get rid of and that constant. Without getting rid of that constant, I cannot succeed. Okay, and now, okay, we have a prior and for the model size. And, and for that model size, and potentially, there are pitches two models. And then, okay, for those pitches two, uh, P and pitches S models, I'm sorry. And for those pitches S models, and why, which model, and what kind of prior I should give? And the prior uh, we, we are going to give is a kind of a weak informative prior. And in this sense that we are going to give a uniform prior of all possible models. But only and for those models with a non-degenerate design. And if the design is degenerate, I cannot have the third step. So, and, and we only give a, uh, uh, we, we give a uniform prior and of all possible models. So this is the and, uh, and prior and, uh, we use. And, uh, and, and using this prior, and we could prove the posterior and the contracts to the truth and, and read optimally. And so, okay, and now, and what's the parallel and, and the story and the first stochastic block model? And the first stochastic block model, if you know and, uh, 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 the number of communities, if you know and who is in which community, and then and we, what we are going to do, and we use uh, an elliptical Laplace prior. And, and now still we need, and uh, we don't know and how many communities do we have, right? And k could be, could, could, could be equal to one, could be two and three or more. And so we need a prior and, and for k. And, and, okay, and again, we are calculating the model complexity. So suppose you know and who is in which community, and still you need to estimate the, the B matrix, the connection part B matrix, let's say K by K matrix, and you have an order of K square parameters. And, and then and in addition, we don't know who is in which community. And, you know, and, and suppose you have K communities, and how many ways to assign, and, and we have K to power N way and, uh, to assign and, uh, and communities. And then we take a log and to get the uh, uh, to get a less log n times uh, log k, and then we get the uh, uh, model complexity. So we use the model complexity and, and uh, to have a prior and for the number of the communities. And of course, again, we have to have this strange constant and to, uh, to cancel out and the constant, normalization constant we have over here and for elliptical Laplace prior, otherwise we are going to fail. And then, okay, uh, and for the given, uh, of given k, okay, and say k equal to two, and potentially we have two to the power k uh, uh, ways, uh, oh no, potentially we have, I'm sorry, when k is equal to two, potentially we have uh, two to the power n ways and to assign clusters, and, and what we are doing over here, just put a weak uh, prior and a uniform prior of all possible clusters. So, okay, this is the prior and, uh, and, and we use. And, and, and for this prior, again, and we could show and uh, 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 read optimal posterior contraction. And now, and uh, we need to give a prior on for the general framework. And our general framework, and and uh, you have y and y, you know, uh, and, and with a mean uh, and uh, less less my mean matrix. Okay. And we need to have a prior for z, less for model selection. And after doing our model selection prior, and also you need to have prior for b. So, and uh, to have a model selection prior, and we need to know the model complexity. And then for every model size tau, okay, I use tau to denote model size. The tau over here would be equal to little s for sparse linear regression. That's the, uh, uh, the length of the true support. And, and tau would be equal to little k for a uh, stochastic block model. That's the number of communities over there. And, and for every little tau, and we calculate and the model complexity. And, and so that's the, and for every little tau, and, uh, and that's the model size, there are potentially many, many models, and many, many models, and we are just counting a number of the models, then take a log. So, and, and this term corresponds to and, uh, n times log k, you know, for sparse linear regression, and you have, an, oh, no, for a stress block model, and we have k to the power n ways to partition. If you take a log, then you get n log k. So, so this term and it corresponds to and n log k over here. And, and then, and what's this guy? And this guy, and when tau is equal to k, right, for stochastic block model, 
And, and this guy corresponds to n square over there. After you do your model selection, and you still need to uh, estimate the B matrix, and which has n, an order of k square parameters. And so, okay, this is the prow, and uh, then and we, and the, we are going to use the modest complexity and, and, uh, for our uh, prow. So, okay, and, uh, and now, and suppose you have a model complexity, and then, and this is the prow, and uh, we are going to have, and, uh, and for the model size, and it's at nearly identical to sparse linear regression, and or to circuit block model. And after, and uh, you get the model size, they are put in many, many models, and we just put, uh, put a uniform prior of all models. And then, and, and given uh, uh, the model you have with a, uh, a fixed model size, and, and then uh, you just use a elliptical Laplace prior. So, and the story on, we have over here is basically identical to sparse linear regression or on a circuit block model. And, and, I, and two things I want to mention and, uh, and for this general prior. And, and one thing I want to mention is we have to use a heavy tail prior, otherwise we are going to fail. And that's, that's a very important thing. And another thing I want to mention is and, uh, and the constant over here and, uh, uh, to uh, cancel out the normalization constant for Oedipus Laplace prior is very important. Without that constant, and there and I'm going to fail. So, okay, and, and for this prior, and, uh, we, uh, uh, and we uh, calculate the posterior, and then we evaluate the posterior under the truth. We are assuming there's a true model. And, and we are going to show that and the posterior con and contracts to choose and, and optimally. So, okay, and this is uh, my y matrix, and I observe y, and the theta star is the, is the true meaning, is the true theta star. And, and so, and we use the prior we just described, and, and then calculate the posterior, and then evaluate the posterior under the true model. And what we are going to show is this. And, and we show that and with very high probability, and my posterior is concentrated around the truth. And I have a ball over there. And the size of the ball has two terms. And the first term is called the bias square. And the second term is called variance. And, and this and the formula is basically identical to the formula and you had seen in the, uh, uh, in the first talk. And in the first talk, this guy would be like LH star. And the second one would be the square root term. And so, and, and what we have over here, and then the second term is the model complexity, and the first term is the bias square. And, and uh, the tau star is the, uh, uh, is the model size. And this is true for any tau star I plug in. That means, and for circuit block model, I could plug in and, and k equal to one, k equal to two, k equal to three, k equal to four, and, and this formula is always right. And, and, and this guy would be the model complexity. When k is getting bigger, and then the model is more com complex. And for sparse linear regression, s could be one, could be two, could be three, and then when s is getting bigger, this guy would be getting bigger. And, and this guy is the bi square. Bi square is, okay, and, and uh, among all models and, uh, with a fixed and, uh, model size, and we found and the best possible approximation. And this is called bi square. So, and, and when, when, tau, when tau star over here is getting bigger and bigger, and then bi square over here is getting smaller and smaller. And of course, then the question is, and, and you will ask, okay, which tau star you should plug in? And we should plug in a tau star and uh, to do bias and variance trade-off. And also we have a posterior contraction result for the model size. So, and this kind of result and, uh, and has a name, it's called Oracle inequality. And Oracle inequality, and then, uh, so we, uh, uh, and we have a, a bias square and a variance. And for example, and, you know, for, and in sparse linear regression, and you may assume it's a sparse, uh, a sparse model, but actually the true model is never sparse. And then the, if the true model is never sparse, and then this, this uh, bi square would be, appear in your upper bound. And again, and the result is true for any model size you plug in. And so and the results and, uh, and, could, and may do an adaptive model selection. So, and the model is very, uh, uh, and the result is, is quite abstract. And let's just look at uh, 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 concrete examples. 
And, and one concrete example is sparse linear regression. Okay. And for sparse linear regression, and, and, uh, and for a model size S, and potentially there are P choose, two, uh, P choose S models, and then I could calculate the model complexity. And the model complexity is, uh, is this guy. And then, okay, and, and what we could show is this. And the posterior real, and for the prior we use, the posterior is concentrated inside the ball. And, and the size of the ball has two terms, and this guy is called bias square, and this guy is called variance. And you could plug in S star equal to one, equal to two, equal to three, equal to four, or equal to P. And you could plug in any S star, this is true. And the bias square over here is, okay, for every um, model size S star, there are potentially P choose S star models. And, and, and what we found over here is the best possible approximation among those models, and this is by square. And, and this term corresponds to an LH star and, uh, in, uh, uh, in the first talk. And so, and similarly, and we have an, uh, a posterior contraction result and for the model size. And if your model is truly a uh, sparse linear regression model, if the model size is truly S star, and then what's this guy? And this guy will be equal to zero, right? You have no bias if your model is, you know, truly a sparse linear regression model. And, and so this is a special case. And suppose your model is truly a uh, sparse linear regression model. And then, and then you know, and the bias square term would disappear. And also we have a positive contraction result for the model size. And, and you could and, uh, and get a positive contraction result for estimation as well. And this is a positive, positive contraction result for uh, prediction. People call it prediction. And you, you may have a positive contraction result and for parameter estimation as well and under uh, a restricted eigenvalue condition. Uh, and, and this is the kappa over here, and it could be very small, and it could be close to zero. Uh, so uh, that's uh, for uh, sparse linear regression. And, uh, and, and let's compare our result on we, uh, with other results in literature. And, uh, and for example, if we compare our result and with uh, the result by Otto van der Waal and his two courses, and and you see that we get a, a, a better upper bound and, uh, and for both prediction and parameter estimation. And if we compare with Lasso, and that's possibly the most you know, uh, started uh, uh, um, strategy in the past 20 years, and, and we get a better result as well. Okay, uh, let's uh, first pass the regression. And and now and let's uh, look at a stochastic block model and uh, a network model. And for this network model, and, and we could show that and the posterior and is uh, uh, truly concentrated and around the truth. And the size of the ball, again, has two terms. And one is um, by square, and the other one is variance. And you could plug in and any a number of communities over here. K star over here could be one, could be two, could be as large as n. And everyone is, is a community, and everyone is not anyone's friend. And, and so K star could be arbitrary. And then uh, over here is uh, the best possible approximation. And, and if you use your success block model and to approximate on theta star. And, and the, uh, the number of communities over here is K star. And so, and, uh, and, for, and if you have K-star communities, and uh, potentially there are K-star to power n models, and, and this is the and best possible fit and using the block model. Uh. And as well, and we have a positive contraction result and, uh, uh, for, the, uh, 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 models, uh, for the number of communities as well. Uh. And so, uh, and, and again, and if your model is truly a block model, and with k star and uh, uh, communities, and then the bias square and term would disappear, and and this rate and is optimal, and uh, and it matches and the best rate we could get, and uh, and uh, we have already shown in my uh, in my paper a few years ago. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, and, and some people uh, uh, in uh, uh, in uh, network and like to do study and so-called graph limit uh, stuff, and and uh, so stochastic so block model and it corresponds to uh, a function f. F is a blockwise function, uh, stochastic so block model, and and over here and some people like to assume the f function is smooth, and and if you assume the f function is smooth, you could get a very similar uh, 
uh, theory and it's very routine extension. And, and uh, you could show the rate you get, you know, is optimal. And also there's a phase transition at alpha equal one, uh, smoothness. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about it. It's just a routine analysis. Uh. So, uh, and, uh, I, and I want to uh, make a few comments. And, and one comment I want to make is, on, uh, and, uh, you know, and in for the model, we, don't need, we do not need to know and how many communities we have. We do not need to know that. And you, get, you can just do adaptation uh, automatically. And another thing is and the, uh, the results are really optimal, and, and we cannot really improve that. And, and the results and can be extended to some other uh, problems as well, you know, like block matrix, uh, complication, and mixed membership. Uh, and mixed membership means you know, everyone could be in several communities. And, and Tamara is a, is a big expert uh, in mixed membership. So, and, and another thing I want to mention is uh, for addition learning uh, uh, problem, and uh, we get uh, uh, Oracle uh, results as well, and, uh, on, and, and, and the result is rate optimal. Uh, and, uh, and, and since and, and, uh, uh, many people over here and, uh, uh, don't really like theory, I'm not going to uh, uh, comment on the, uh, the theoretic insights of, of digital learning uh, 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 model. And I know and, and from this result, you could see that and, and many results uh, in literature for digital learning are not optimal at all, at all uh, far from being optimal. Uh. So, and, uh, and uh, the general framework and, uh, would include and many other examples as well. And for example, and we uh, and, uh, would include a wavelet estimation and uh, wavelet regression or wavelet density estimation, and which was started by David Donahue and Yin Jiangsong. And uh, in the 1990s uh, and, uh, and early in 2000, and, and tons of papers on that. And, uh, if, uh, you, know, and uh, you could see that and, uh, our result would match uh, the best they could do and under the, uh, the possibly the weakest assumption you have. And in addition, uh, we could do aggregation. And my uh, co-author, Anastasia Sipkov, and did a lot of work on aggregation. Uh, and, and, and then we could match uh, basically the best possible result they have uh, too. And we could do a multiple uh, uh, multi-task learning problem, and multiple task learning problem is similar to the uh, is kind of related to one uh, uh, example in uh, in the first talk. You know, you have a crowdsourcing problem, and and, and then uh, and, and how to do it optimally. Uh, <clears throat> and so, okay, uh, and this is a conclusion of my talk, and uh, and, and in this talk, and we uh, give a general uh, model framework. And, and this model joint framework and includes uh, many important models and in non parameter estimation, in high domain statistics, and, and, and a network analysis. And uh, we give a unified way uh, uh, to assign prior, and also a unified way uh, to give a theoretical justification. And we show that the posterior con uh, contracts and, and to, the true, and, uh, to the truth, and, uh, and also on, on the accuracy, and uh, is optimal. And for all models uh, are listed in my talk. Uh. So, okay, and um, that's all of my talk. Uh. Thank you. And so, um, uh, uh, there, I guess there are two things over here. And, and one is uh, comparing with the frequencies. And, and, and on the theoretical side, we match what, what a frequencies could do. And on the computation side, and it's kind of, uh, and uh, to get the best you could do for success block model, and, the, and so far, and, uh, uh, the best algorithm and, uh, and to achieve that rate is not really computable. And, and it's similar over here. Uh, similar over here is, uh, is how, to, how, to, how do you do the calculation? And what I really want to show is to show some kind of MCMC -MC convergence. And also, and for the mixing time, I want to give a good control. And, 
and I haven't uh, succeeded yet. And, uh, and my and a, uh, 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 I talked to uh, Peter Beagle, and uh, 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 Peter Beagle is a professor at uh, uh, Berkeley. And I talked to him, and what he's trying to do is he tried to use a variation method and to approximate and uh, the, you know and what we are doing over here. Uh, I think and Tamara is going to talk about a variation method uh, tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs>